Hi, this is Ms. Schnettler, and I'm talking about survival, inquiring, and analyzing. Um, this video is to help you if you needed to review the instructions, didn't understand what I said in class, missed that day, or for whatever reason, you've come back to see some instructions about this assignment. Um, this video is probably going to be a little long because inquiring and analyzing is an assignment that has a lot of details and a lot of parts to it. <clears throat> to it. Um, but remember, you don't have to watch the whole video. You can just watch the part that you need. Um, you can put me on two times speed and listen to me talk to you like a chipmunk and make the video go twice as fast and just pause or slow down when you get to a part that you need. Uh, this video is a resource for you. It is not meant to be a uh, thing that you have to watch all the way through uh, when you don't need to. So just make sure you use it as a resource and uh, to help you in class and do well on the assignment. All right, um, so the assignment has a design cycle uh, um, diagram on it. Um, it currently has a video, but this is actually the video I'm making right now is going to replace that video. Uh, and there's also a link for some product review files that we will talk about later in this video. There are some instructions and submit um, for getting started and submitting your work. Uh, then that's literally just how to get the document you need and then turn that document in. It is possible if you are watching this video in the future that some of these details will have changed. Make sure you're reading your Canvas page um, and your documents because things will change over time. This is the very first time I have done this project, so I can actually almost guarantee you that some things will change. But overall, this video is explaining about the assignment in general, how to go about it. So if the little details in the client letter change or um, other parts of the project change a little bit, this video will still help you understand how to complete the assignment, how to do well on the assignment. So we're going to get started by clicking this blue link. Now we'll open up our own copy of the survival inquiring and analyzing document that is tied to this Canvas page. Make sure you are not doing file, make a copy. Um, that was something I used to have other classes do, but this is a different style of assignment. If you do that, um, I will never see it. Um, it. Your work won't be lost. We'll still be able to fix it, but um, it will be much easier for you if you just click on that blue link. All right, when you open up the document, you have directions, you have areas to write, like the design brief, and you can see this design brief is assessing you on criteria A, Roman numeral 1, 2, and 4. And then if you come down, there's a separate section called the product review, and that is Roman numeral three. Then you have your rubric, your IB achievement level scale, and your IB command terms. All of this will help you be successful, which is why I include it on all of your major project assignments. All right, so if we head back up to the directions, by the time you've gotten to this video, uh, you should have already read the client letter. Uh, we would do this as a class. Uh, I should have made a video of it. If I haven't, uh, ask me. I will make a video of that. Um, the questions I ask you while you are reading the client letter are specifically designed to help you pick out the information from the client letter that you need in order to do well on inquiring and analyzing. So if you haven't done that yet or you missed it, uh, that's definitely a thing to either go back and read or go back and watch that video especially because in this project, as of the time of this filming, um, there are four subtopics that you can pick from, um, and that's all part of the client letter, so you would want to make sure that you know which task you're going to be completing uh, for this project. So after reading the client letter, you want to work to create the problem statement. You may need to use inference skills to help you write the problem statement. So if I scroll down, I can see that the problem statement is Roman numeral one, and that there are some helper questions. I can also see that there's some boxes above here. The client is whoever asked you for help, uh, specifically the company or the organization that is asking you for help, rather than a specific person. Um, currently, as of the filming of this, it's the camp council. I'm hoping to come up with a cooler name in the future, but that is what we have right now. The designer is simply you. Uh, currently, this is a solo project, but if you're working with a team, then you would also put your team names, your team member names. So 
So then we get to the problem statement. The problem statement has three helper questions next to it, and those are based on the rubric. So if I come down to the rubric, I can see that a 7 or 8 for Roman numeral 1 says I need to explain and justify a solution to the client's problem using information from the client letter. Explain is to give a detailed account, including reasons or causes, and justify is to give valid reasons or evidence to support an answer or conclusion. That's why these three helper questions are here. What is the client's need? What is their problem? What are they asking for? What do they want? Why is that a problem for them? Why? So there's your reasons, your becauses. That helps you. So you, sorry, let me restart that. So you would want a detailed account of what the client's need is. What exactly is their problem with as much detail as you can? Then the second question, why is this a problem for you, for them, is helping you to come up with those reasons to back up your answer and that brings it to that explain level. If you just tell about the client's need, then that would be outlining. But when you explain, you are giving the details and providing reasons for that. And the last one, justify, is why should you help? Why should you help solve this problem? Um, I know in this particular story at the time of filming, um, it's pretty clear why you should help, uh, but in other problems or other projects, it may not be as clear. Um, so just remember, I don't accept because I have to for school or because Ms. Schnettler is making me. Those are not valid reasons um, for helping someone, but you could think of things like um, it is I be caring to help others when they ask you to. Um, if I'm able to help someone and they ask me for help, it's the principal thing to do to help out. Or I like doing projects or I like helping other people or it benefits me in some way to help out this group of people. You know, any of those reasons would be fine. Um, it has to be related to the project and it has to be valid. Um, it cannot be grade related. <clears throat> So then the next most common question I get is, well, do I have to write all that? That kind of sounds like a lot or a variation of that question. Well, according to IB, no, you are given the rubric. It explains exactly how you're going to get graded. So if you want a seven or an eight, which translates to a 100 to a 95 percent, then yes, you need to explain and justify. You need to have a nice, detailed problem statement. Um, it should be no less than three sentences long, simply because you need to tell what the problem is, you need to explain why it's a problem for the client, and then justify your usage. Um, but by no means is that exactly how I'm going to grade you. Um, if you write three short sentences, then that's not going to meet those standards. Um, if you write two really long, detailed sentences that are kind of run on, but you do what you need to do, that might meet those standards. Um, so it's not about a specific number of sentences. It's about making sure that you are meeting those command terms. Did you explain the problem in detail? Did you give reasons for why that <clears throat> is a problem for them? And did you give valid reasons to support that answer? If that's too much, if you go down to the next one, which is a five or six, you only have to explain. You don't have to justify. That's still a detailed account with reasons, but you don't have to justify. If you don't want to do a detailed account with reasons, you can outline, but that gets you a three or a four. So you just want to keep in mind how the level of your work or the amount of effort that you put in is going to be affecting your grade. Again, um, these should be detailed answers. You should probably have, I mean, I'm not really supposed to tell you how many sentences you should have, but my, my gut is definitely three, probably five, maybe more. Um, and this should be really detailed. Tell what the client needs in detail and then tell why that's a problem for them and why you should help. And that's your problem statement. So that might start, might look like, um, Again, this is just one of the tasks that was provided. Obviously, if you picked a different task, you would put something different here. The chem council needs a diagram and a model for this. Um, the You might go, the camp needs this because um, they 
want a model of it because like why would they want a model why wouldn't they just want you to build it um why does the camp need the thing that they've asked you for why does the camp council want a diagram and a model you know maybe they're not engineers maybe they don't have that background they don't understand how mechanisms work um so they need to see how it's going to work they need to see how the camp resources are going to be used um, before they agree to spending time and people on this project um whatever it is and then the I should help or something your justification um, again those are samples those are not real sentences as this, this would not score well uh, I'm just giving you a little bit of some ways to start some sentences and some verbal encouragement to get your paragraph out there um, next down is your design statement that's pretty simple you're just gonna fill in the blank with whatever it is that you're making um, if you're doing the solar array you're gonna fill in the blank with the solar array if you are doing the vehicle that switches from two to four wheel drive, you're going to put that in there. If you are doing the equipment transport, that's what you'll fill in the blank with. If I scroll back up to the directions, we are now on step three. Part of preparing a design brief is researching topics that will help you to solve the client's problem. You should create a research plan before you conduct your research. It's a plan that's helping you do your research. The plan should prioritize topics and tell what kind of research you will do for each topic. This will help you to be focused and efficient with your research. And then I also provide you some example topics. I can almost guarantee you if you're watching this video in the future that those topics will change over time as I get feedback from my current students and I think about this project. Um, I will have a better idea of exactly what kind of topics will help you. But you also don't have to use the topics I give you. They're example topics. These are here if you are feeling stuck and you don't know where to get started. Um, but you can, of course, do any other topic that you feel that you need to know on how to be successful on this project. The research is for you to help you build a background of knowledge that's going to be useful when you start coming up with ideas. So you get to pick the topics. Now we're going to scroll down. Again, you can see there are some helper questions here. What do you need to research? How important is each topic? And do you plan on using primary or secondary sources for the topic? It also says if you need more rows, you can put the mouse or the cursor down in the bottom right of the table and press the key. So if I put my cursor anywhere, um, I just press the tab key. When it gets to the end, it will make a new row. Um, some people don't like that method. That's fine. You can also click in a row, right click, and insert a row below or above. And you can also right click to delete a row. So you can adjust this as you need to. Um, if you accidentally click on something and it uh, super messes up this table because this is a table inside of another table, remember you have your undo button or you can hit control Z. So if I do this and I don't like it, I can hit control Z. Or if I accidentally mess up my table, again, control Z or undo, we'll fix that. All right, let's go down to the rubric and see what is expected of us. Constructs a research plan which states and prioritizes the primary and secondary research needed to develop your own machine independently. So that would mean outside of this video, outside of the directions that I've given in class, you're able to just do this. You don't need me. The five or six is the exact same words except for with some guidance. So that means if you need me to help you a little bit beyond the instructions that I provide initially. Then we have states the research needed to develop your own machine. So then it gets quite different. So we no longer um, we're no longer prioritizing primary and secondary research. So um, that'll be important because if you don't tell me if it's primary re or secondary research or you don't prioritize, I cannot score you higher than a three or a four. Um, but again, that might be you might be okay with that. Maybe the research plan is too much for you. And that's where you decide that you're not going to put some of your effort. That's up to you. But I think you'll find that the research plan is... <clears throat> Let me put it this way. I think a lot of students are initially intimidated when they see the research plan. But I'm hoping that what I show you today will take some of that away. Um, it's not a scary thing. It's just a thing that you maybe haven't seen before or don't use a lot in your other classes. It's literally 
just a plan of what you need to research. Um, in the time that we are living, we have all been down an internet rabbit hole. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's when you start looking up one thing and then you see something else and you click on that and then you click on that and you click on that. And before you know it, you are looking at bunny rabbits that live in a different country and you had started off doing research for your science class. All right, it happens. A research plan helps to kind of prevent that action and helps to make sure that you are spending your time researching on something that is going to help you do well on your project. Um, I usually limit the amount of time that you have to research in class. Um, currently, I've been doing about two days of research in class, but that changes depending on the project and what's going on. So it may be one day, it may be three. Make sure you ask me in class. But the idea is if you only have two days to research, and you need to research multiple topics to be able to do well on your subject, a plan is going to help to make sure you use that time well. So for topics, again, I have my, my helper topics up here. Mechanisms, how to make a model using found materials, which is what the current pandemic class is doing in the future. Hopefully you'll be using robot bits. Um, systems of mechanisms, machines, and any other topic that you feel you need to be successful. Now, one of the tricks on this is, again, kids will ask, how many topics do I need to have? Well, if you notice in the rubric, it doesn't tell you. You need as many re research topics as you need to do well on the project. So that's saying if you are a kid in middle school and you have never learned about mechanisms before and you have never made um, a machine with multiple mechanisms working together to do a project, you probably need to do a lot of research and it's not an insult. It's just when you do something that you've never done before, you probably have a lot to learn about it. Um, one of my big suggestions is break up your topics because then you get more topics. So in one of the previous classes, uh, students had to look up fine and gross motor skills. Well, don't look them up together. Look up fine motor skills and look up gross motor skills as two separate topics. Now you have two topics instead of one. But I am expecting you to do a good deal of research. You should have multiple, multiple, multiple topics. Okay, again, for IB, I'm not supposed to tell you a number. But I'm saying I've given you five to start with, to start with. So it would be ill-advised to do much less than that, and probably very good advised to do more than that. All right, so let's set them down. So rather than mechanisms, let's think about... Um, specific mechanisms. So I chose the solar array as the example for this video, and I'm just going to stick with it, stick with it at this point. So I need mechanisms that can go around a corner because that's one of the requirements for the solar array is it has to go around a corner. So I need, sorry that my chart is under the microphone. I need to research mechanisms that have a perpendicular setup so that they can go around a corner. So I'm using my quick reference chart. So I'm going to research the worm and wheel. I'm going to research the rack and pinion. I'm going to research the universal joint. I'm going to research a chain drive and a belt drive. And I'm going to research bevel gears. Okay, I may also need to look up mechanical systems. How am I going to get all of these different mechanisms to work together? Oop. And then maybe, maybe I'm interested in what it's like to survive. And my last one, I'm not really quite sure what this teacher is talking about, a, a found items model. Or if you're in the future, maybe you need to look up your VEX parts um, and, and learn about your different VEX parts to see how you need to build or, or whatever. 
All right, so I have my topics. This looks good. This is a good amount of information. I feel like if I know this information, I will be able to come up with a good, um, a good idea to help the client solve their problem. So now I need to know the importance. Again, I'm limited on my time. I'm being given two class periods to do this research. That's a lot of topics to look up in two class periods. Yes, I can do some as homework as well, especially if I'm going for a seven or eight, um, but it's possible I'm gonna run out of time. So I need to prioritize these. Um, so I know, sorry, my brain was processing. Um, so I need to prioritize these so that if I run out of time, the topics that were left over were the least important. I'm still gonna probably do okay if I didn't get to them. I wanna make sure that whatever information I absolutely need, I research first. So um, the how you, y'all, no, I'm struggling. All right, how you decide to label the importance is up to you. Um, you can do numbers. If you do numbers, make sure you tell me which number is the most important and which number is the least important, and I can take it from there. If you just number it, I don't know. I don't know if you're using golf rules where one is best, or if you're using basketball rules where eight is best. So make sure you, you label best and worst, or, or most and least, um, or you can label them medium, high, low, um, I've had kids come up with other ways to label the importance, but the importance is just what order should you do the research in? You're basically ordering them. You're prioritizing them. Which one is most important for you to research? So I'm going to do the medium, high, low. So I'm going to say the chain drive I think is low because it doesn't really go around a corner. Uh, my chart says it's, oh, my chart says it's parallel, not perpendicular. Okay. Well, that's why, because it's wrong. Um, Universal joint, that might be useful. So I'm going to say medium. I'm going to say like, I really think a bevel gear is going to be good for me. So I'm going to say high on that one. Rack and pinion, again, I don't think it is perpendicular, but I don't think it's going to help me get directions around a corner. I'm going to go low on that one. Worm and wheel, maybe. So I'll put that one in a medium. A mechanical system is definitely high. I have to get multiple mechanisms to connect together and to move. So that's something I need to understand. Surviving a disaster is interesting to me as a person, but probably not that important for this project. And I do have to figure out how to make a model to show the camp council. So I'm going to put that as a medium. So now I know the order. So I know I'm going to look up topics five and six first. Then I'm going to look up topics one, three, and eight. And if I have time, I will look at two, four, and seven. Now I have to talk about the type of research I'm going to do. This is simply primary or secondary resource. Um, and what you are planning on using. It is not a promise. It is not a contract. It is just, do you understand the kind of research that would go along with that topic? So primary research is, again, going to be um, more or less somebody giving their personal experiences. So from an autobiography or a diary or a journal or an interview or a video that somebody makes explaining their experience with something. Those would all be primary resources. A secondary resource is someone explaining something that didn't happen to them or explaining a factual thing. Um, but not, again, a factual thing that they personally discovered. So any kind of report, most websites that you use to do research, uh, Wikipedia for sure is secondary research. Um, YouTube is often secondary research, but if it is a vlog or an interview or someone sharing their experience, then that would be primary. So that's all you're doing. You're just saying, would I probably be running into secondary resources to do this? or would I probably be running into primary resources to do this? So generally, if it is a kind of like scientific topic, um, like your mechanisms, that's gonna be secondary. But this one, what it's like to survive a disaster, that's probably going to be people's primary. It might not be. I might end up finding a website that is someone telling me what other people have experienced, and that might end up being secondary. That's okay. 
but right now I'm aiming to do primary research. That's my goal. And now my research plan is done. It's got lots of topics, they're all prioritized, and it tells what kind of research they're going to do, or I'm going to do. So this is a, a, a good to decent research plan. I come back up, now we're on step four. After conducting your research, you need to be able to analyze and report your findings of what you've learned and how what you've learned will apply to this project. It should be in your voice. What did you learn? What do you understand now that you have done the research? What conclusions can you make now that you've done your research? Plagiarism is not acceptable. Multiple quotes and long quotes is not acceptable. This is not an essay. You do not need a quote. Paraphrasing must be done well, and you still have to cite it. When I say paraphrasing must be done well, paraphrasing is, again, putting something into your voice telling me what you understand. I don't want it to sound like a bunch of 30-year-old engineers wrote your project. You guys are smart, but you are in middle school. It should sound like you wrote it. It should sound like you're telling me what you've learned. That's what I'm interested in. If I want to know what Wikipedia has to say or what Google results say, I can do that myself. I'm your teacher. I want to know what you've learned. All right, let's scroll down to the rubric. And we are on the green section now. You must have a complete design brief which presents the analysis of relevant research on machines. The design brief is detailed and based on the client letter. Your research findings should analyze information that you need to be able to design a machine in your own words. Plentiful citations that are properly formatted. That's a lot. Um, you've probably noticed by now, and if you haven't, I'm going to tell you. Getting a 7 or an 8 on IB criteria is always achievable, but it is almost always above and beyond work. Right, like here you had to justify on top of it. Um, here you had to be able to do it on your own without asking for help. Um, analyzing is a big one we have to talk about. That's in the command term. So again, do you have to do all that? No, you can do less, but again, you're going to go down an achievement level. Um, just keep that in mind. I do feel like the green um, Roman numeral four on this assignment is probably the, the most intense um, and requires the most work. So make sure you're regulating your time. If you're running behind schedule, it's one fourth of your project. Maybe go here if you need to. But you can definitely do this, 100% belief. Okay, so develop means to improve incrementally, to elaborate or expand in detail. That's what we're really talking about here, to elaborate, expand in detail. So your findings need to be telling me in detail, what did you learn? What do you understand better now that you've did, done your research? And then you have to analyze. So basically here, um, they're telling you you need to break down information, um, figure out the essential elements or structure, identify parts and relationships, um, and reach conclusions. So parts and relationships, that might be, if you're talking about mechanisms, it might literally be the parts and how they work together, especially if you're looking at how mechanical systems work, how different mechanisms hook up to each other to make a machine work. Um, that would be super relevant. It may be that you're making conclusions about how this information applies to your project. So you can see here, I've made another table. I've got the topics numbered. And then I have a spot for your findings. Again, that's what did you learn? And your resources, that'll be your website. So we're just gonna do um, bevel gears. Let's do bevel gears. You do not have to start all your sentences with I learned um, or anything like that. I find it just helps you to put it in your own voice. So if you struggle with that, it's a good suggestion, but it's certainly not a requirement. So I'm going to do a bevel gear search. Oops, that's just a bevel. Let's do bevel gears. Okay. Um, so I have a definition here. If I didn't know what a bevel gear was at all, that might be useful to me. Um, I can see there's a Wikipedia page. This looks like a really technical page. Um, another thing you can do, if you find that maybe this looks too technical, you can put teens or kids next to it. 
And sometimes it will give you some information that is geared towards people who aren't already in their 20s and 30s having graduated college. Uh, again, it's not that you're not smart. You just still have a lot of learning to do and a lot of school ahead of you. So sometimes those websites are um, intended for people who have already finished that. So let's go to Academic Kids. Click on that. Oh, okay, this website doesn't work anymore. So never mind. Let's go to this one. Let's go to the top one. I've had a lot. Oh, here we go. So here's a bubble gear. I can see a picture. I have some information. Maybe I use some of this. Um, yeah, this looks good. So what I'm going to do before I leave the website, I'm going to copy it and put it in my document so I don't forget my resource. All right, um, and then I type some more sentences explaining what I learned from that website and I come back here and I wanna go somewhere else. Um, I know sometimes that there are like summaries of information on Google. You wanna make sure that your when you copy and paste your link over here, it is never starting with Google. I am not interested in your Google search. I am interested in you clicking on things to learn the actual information. All right, that was a Pinterest board, so that wasn't good. I could have read that. All right, this one has a ton of information. That's really good. Okay, so let's say I decide to use this website as well. And I add some more text. So I wanna make sure I've got my findings, that I tell what I've learned about each project. It's in my own voice. Then I also, again, if I'm going for top points, I need to analyze it. I either need to break down the parts and find the relationships between the parts, and or I need to come to a conclusion about how this is useful for my project. So I might say, um, based on my research, bevel gears, um, you know, bevel gears turn um, motion without changing torque or speed into a different direction, which is exactly what I need for my solar array for the camp council. So in conclusion, I think I should use a bevel gear on my project or something like that. Again, if I'm going for top points, I do need to turn these resources into proper citations, but I can save that for the end. I don't have to do it right now. Um, I'm going to do it for you right now because I'm not going to go through examples of findings for each one. Um, I have a website over here called SiteFast. There are other websites like EasyBib and BibMe, um, but I find that they're actually a little bit more complicated to use and sometimes um, they have a lot of ads or only let you do so many citations a day and I haven't had that problem with SiteFast. That might change in the future. I might have a different website. So um, I've got a website right here. So I'm just going to put it here. But if I have something else, if I had a YouTube video or I watched a documentary on Netflix, I could do an online video. If I found a newspaper article, um, maybe that would be for the surviving a disaster thing. Um, maybe I know someone who survived a de disaster and they're a refugee from a disaster or they experienced one when they were younger. I can do an interview and SiteFast will walk me through how to cite any of that. So it's a great site. I hit the little magnifier and it's gonna look for all of the information. It's gonna fill it in as best it can. It could not find an author or a date. So I wanna go back to the website and look. So this is the Kittle one. And that's probably the most common issue is it can't find an author or a date. So we always look, sometimes humans are better at finding that information than computers. So here's a date. There is no author. 
um, but I can put a date in there. It looks like October 21st at 2020. There we go. October. If I don't know the author, it's okay to leave it blank. Uh, it does say organization, so I could put Kittle if I wanted. Um, Kittle Encyclopedia, maybe. Let's do that. And it has automatically generated my citation down here. I can just highlight it, copy it, and then come here and replace my URL with the proper citation. Again, I know that that's a lot, so if it's too much, you don't have to do the proper citations. You can just put your URLs. Just please make sure your URLs do not start with Google. All right. So then the last thing you have is your product review. Finally, you will conduct product reviews which are different from your research. A product review is when you analyze, check your command term glossary, similar products that inspire your own solutions. So we're going to come back down to the rubric first. Analyze. Oh, so this is Roman numeral three. The product review is Roman numeral three. Um, analyze a group of similar products that inspire you with ideas for your own machine. Then the five, six is describe a group of products. So again, there's that difference between analyze and describe. And then outline one existing product. So let's talk about those command terms. So analyze again, you're going to be breaking down. You're going to be looking at other people's projects. Um, at least at the current time of this video, that's what I have planned for you. Um, I have found other people who have done similar projects and put together a list for you. Um, you can research or product review something else, um, but I would say don't simply because it's extra work that you don't have to do. I've already found the products for you. You don't get graded on finding the products. You get graded on analyzing them or describing them. So, um, I would stick with that uh, and, and use what I've given you. But if you want to do something different, you are absolutely allowed. It is your research project. Um, so to analyze them. So again, I need to be breaking them down. How are these going to inspire me with ideas for my own machine? And it could be good or bad. I could see a project that I don't like and be like, oh, God, that was that was not good. Gosh, I really hope that my project does not look like that. That's okay. You can put that in your analysis. You can say in conclusion, um, they did not turn around a corner like they're supposed to. Um, and thus this was not a successful project and I need to make sure that mine does turn around a corner. Um, it could also be like, oh, you know what? They ended up using a uh, worm and wheel for their mechanism instead of a bevel gear like I was thinking and it actually worked out really well. Um, so I'm gonna keep that in mind for my own project. So you wanna make sure that you're reaching your conclusions. Um, you can also, it's pretty easy on these ones because they're mechanisms to identify parts and relationships. Um, you can identify the input and describe verbally what's going on. So first they turn the crank and then a gear train moves, which activates the chain drive, which activates the belt drive, which then makes the solar array rotate. Um, and you can explain those relationships. The, the torque does not change, the speed does not change, or the torque does, or the speed doesn't. Um, the direction of travel changes. It goes from rotary motion to an oscillating motion, whatever it is. So um, this project does actually lend itself to product review really well, um, in my opinion. Uh, but if analyzing is too much, you can always go with describe. And describe is give a detailed account or picture, not a literal picture, but like a verbal picture of a situation, event, pattern, or process. So you, again, would still want to talk about it in a lot of detail, but you don't necessarily have to break down the parts and relationships or come to a conclusion about how it's related to your project. Again, it says group. It does not define what a group is. I'm going to say a group is more than two. And I have left you four blanks. And you will notice that I get to make a decision between whether you got a seven or an eight or a five or a six. So that is up to you. I suggest you do as many as you possibly can. But notice that it's one. So it's one or a group. So doing two isn't going to do you anything. You want to do one or at least three. Um, also outlines. So if you don't 
reach a describe, even if you do five similar products, if you just write a sentence about each one or you write a couple of sentences and they're not very detailed, you didn't hit describe. Describe is a detailed account. If you just wrote a couple of sentences kind of just briefly describing, that's outline. So even if you have five projects with five sentences, I can't score you higher than a three or four because you didn't go higher than outlines. That's how these rubrics work. So make sure that you're paying attention to that. Pardon me. Um, I do have to stop filming because I have a conference starting. Um, so your product reviews, we're going to hop over here. No, that was the wrong. Sorry, I'm flustered. Here we go. It's the product review files. Again, this might look a little bit different, but I'll be sure to explain to you in class if it has changed. Currently, it opens up to a document that has YouTube videos for different projects. Some of them are only six seconds long. Some of them only show and don't talk. Some of them are longer and uh, whoever is presenting the project talks about their project. Um, but you would again just analyze. So you, their input is over here. It does go around a corner. It does rotate a solar panel. Um, I don't know that I feel this solar panel is tilted towards the sun, um, but you might feel differently. Um, but you could talk about how the energy flows through the mechanism, how the different mechanisms are connected, uh, what you think the council would think about this, or what ideas from their design you would like to incorporate into your own design. Um, those would be things that you would want to address in your review. Um, just make sure that you are picking the correct ones for your group. And wrong tab, all you do here is put in your similar product here. Uh, and then you would describe and analyze it over here. Again, it should be a good deal of writing, but you um, are provided with the time for that. Um, I know this video was long, but like I said, this particular assignment is a little bit involved, and I wanted to make sure I was detailed with it because it is worth a lot of points in your class, and it's um, a chance for you to show what you have learned as far as designing and mechanisms and robotics and just, you know, being an amazing kiddo. Um, I hope this was helpful and please stay safe.